idcwoodcraft.com. What's up, my CNC brother or sister? I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. And in this video, we're going to walk through how to work with the Phantom CNC controller, how to run everything on this thing. Brandon, who works for Phantom and is the trainer, is going to walk me through it. So I'm going to ask all the dummy questions that everybody else would be asking when they start playing with their machine. So that's what this is all about. And by the time you're done with this video, you're going to know everything about how to run your Phantom CNC as far as whatever Brandon's gonna teach us. So let's rock this out and become experts with the Phantom CNC 4x4. Let's do it. All right, okay. So. So in here, we have our power that goes to this breaker. We run off 220 to two powers on a ground. And then you have your VFD here, which controls the spindle speeds, and then your drives, which is you have two Ys and then an X and a Z because one of your Ys is reversed. Okay, so these are the stepper motors. This is the spindle control. Yep. Okay, and, and you've got a couple breakers in there. So what are yeah. each breaker going to? So this is your contact switch for your master. Oh, that's contactor, yep. yep. And then this is just your breaker for your main power. Okay. And then this is your spare contactor that you could hook up to your vacuum pumps. Okay, so that's on, a, that's on a, 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 a different input that will be on the control. It'll actually be on the side of the box. Okay. Yep. So, I, you probably won't ever have to be in here, but I like to tell you just so, if you have a problem, I can be like, hey, look at your VFD, and you kind of know. It's over here in this direction. Okay. That's pretty much your HD100 will come separately. We take Which it out. is? Oh, that's the your that's HD the pendant. HD 100. It's your pendant. Okay. So what? So, so, what, so what'd you call it? It's an HD 100. Right here. Okay. Yeah. HC 100. That's pretty much. Okay. And the contact switch is right here. Okay. So the contactor. All right. So that powers everything up. Yeah. So that'll so power when, like spare dust collector, but it's not a load bearing. It's just like a switch. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the after a relay. Kind of so is that the spare contactor? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the uh, second contactor yeah, there that we can wire everything into. Yeah. All right. So let's see. We got a uh, one, two, and, and there's a third E stop on the other side of the machine right over yeah. there. All right. So every time you fire up your machine, okay. You see it pop up with our logo. And then it'll ask you if you want to home your machine out. Okay. Every time you start your machine, you have to home it out. Okay. Every time you shut it off and turn it back on, you have to. So if we hit OK right now, it'll move it back to okay. zero, zero. So, okay. We just hit OK. Okay, so as the machine has come to the home position, so the home position is the front left corner here. So just uh, while it's doing that, your X axis is along the gantry. So technically when you're designing, this is the front of the machine. And then Y goes back and forth like that. And of course Z is up and down. Uh, okay, so that is home. I just want to catch something else. So you have an air blow here. Yep, which goes right here. And that goes to that guy there. Okay. And then uh, you have to have air. So does air have to be connected to the machine at all times? Yeah. Yeah. So your air actually powers your rollers and your air blow. Okay. Which this you probably won't end up using, but if you plan on doing a lot of sheet goods, then your rollers will come in handy. Okay. And is there anything else we missed over here? Nope. We just have the green light, which means we are on. All right. So Nick over here, he's the uh, dealer for the Phantom, just asked a question about the connection. So why don't you ask the question again? Yeah, so the machine is gonna come without the power connected to everything. So you're gonna have to connect your power, you're gonna connect your ground here, and then your 220 lines to the contactor right up there. Yeah, okay. And this is sing 220 single phase. Mm -hmm. Okay. 30 amp. 30 amp breaker for the machine, and for every uh, vacuum pump you have, you have to have a 30 amp breaker for each pump as well. So camera is now on. Here, why don't you hold it in front of the camera, and that way, uh, let's see, you can see where. So, 
This is just your movement buttons right here. So you can move your X, your Y, and then your Z is here. And you also have a high and a low speed on it. So if you press that, you can see that it says low. Come up close. Top. So that is where? Right there. Okay, you're low. Okay. And when you press the high low button, which would be right in the center, uh, this one here. Yep. Okay. So when I press that, it is going to switch from high. Yeah, it's your. I'm, it's your I'm hitting y. wrong. One. Yeah, one negative. It's your high low, right? In the oh, I, okay. Yep. I'm just I'm looking through the camera. So switch. <laughs> Okay, so what it's doing, it is bold on high, low is still there, so it's going to toggle bold, um, the bold on it. Yep. So right now I'm on high, and then I press low. We're okay. on high right now. Now I'm, on, now I'm on high. You're on low right now, because if you press it. Okay, so the one that's not bold is the one. For the yeah, blue. Oh, it's blue. Okay. To me, to me, it's blue. It's bold. But okay. Oh yeah, I see it. Okay. So we're gonna press that again, and then okay. That's all. All right. Okay. So we got a flashing light on here. What's this telling me? Uh, just that it's on. It has power. So it has power to it, and then that it's able to be used. All right. What's the third light for? Uh, if you pop an E stop, like if we press this one over here, it should. That one doesn't want to Okay, so that should come on if it. Yeah, I believe so. Okay, but it still killed the machine, so. Yeah. Okay, so when, when we E stop, then. Yeah, does well, that does the machine have to return to home after you yes. stop? Okay. So it actually asks you. So if we press it, you see that your alarm is triggered here. Okay. And once your e stop is popped off, yeah. it'll ask you to return to machine zero. Okay. And we can always hit OK on that. Okay. And it'll bring it right back. So OK it was right here, and that will come back. Okay. When, as far as homing position, what is what is the the sensor that's telling it that it's at in the home position? It is this little has a tab over here. Okay. We have a little tab over here with a proximity sensor that's on the back of it. Okay. And we actually have one here for the Z axis, okay. and then one down below for the Y. Okay. Is there only one on the Y? It's yes, not on both sides. One. Okay. All right. Yes. So for like a sheet good and how you would zero your machine out mm -hmm. is you would bring it over on your Y. So you can do it two different ways. You can with your Z axis. Okay. So you can bring it down to let's say that's the top of your your piece of material. And you would just go down here and hit your X0, Y0, and Z0. And that would change your workpiece coordinates up here to zeros. Okay, so let's just run that through real quick. So we got, um, I'm going to move Z up. I'm going to move X plus Y. And then um, looking through the camera and then with the Y. Okay, so now uh, X is off so that's right here okay that's the throwback of trying to do it through a camera and having eyes that aren't so good anymore okay so in order to zero out we'll hit the x and the y or i can zero x and y by hitting that button but z is independent so Nick before hit that one and that one and it zeroed out X and Y so now I'm going to press the X Y zero and it zeroed both of them out and then we will press the Z zero and that zeroed Z out okay so you can do it that way for the top of your material or we actually have a cut Okay, so this is for the probe, okay? We have a puck here, or a probe, or tool calibration sensor, there's a couple of different names for it, but there's a plug. Oops. 
that says, oh, by the way, so you then, get 87%. So now there's a plug here so that this plugs into, and you don't ever want to screw it in because you're going to always want to take it back off. Right. And this will go on top of your workpiece. Okay, so that this is going to be calibrated in, in the, the, the height is going to be set in the control preset. Yeah, okay. so I already measured that and have that into the settings of that. Okay, so I know one of the questions that's going to come up is this is a center uh, center probe, mm -hmm. right? Is, it, is this adaptable to a corner probe? It literally fell out the uh, okay. Mostly use the sometimes you, you got a, a three-point touch probe. Where it'll come down, it'll touch on the top, and then it'll come over to the one side, and then it'll come over to the other side. You'll have the thing nested in the corner of the of the of the workpiece. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you, but we you don't have that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we got that. The button on this. Is going to be your tool tip measure. Okay. So, so for the touch probe or. I'm going to hold this and then you can hit the button there. Uh, tool tip measure. Okay. So when I press that button, Nick is just holding it in the air. And I'm going to press tool tip measure. Is anything going to show up on the screen? No, yep. It's just going to start moving. Okay, so it's a one touch as opposed to two touch. So now it came back to 53.5. So this is in uh, millimeters, by the way. Um, one of the other things, I've got to step back real quick. You see these three radioactive things here? That's indicating that, it's at the, that it has been homed, correct? Okay. So it actually knows where it's at. So if these are not on the screen, then th then that means that the machine has not been homed. And but, that won't work either. Okay, so, allow you to do it. okay so it won't even let you run the machine until you you've home. You can move it, but you won't be able to run a program or do your probe or anything okay. like that. Okay, okay. Okay. So and then you have the reason why it's 53.5 is that the puck itself is 43.5 millimeters, and then you have a 10 millimeter of safety that it raises, so you can get a sheet good in there. Okay. And then you always want to just unplug it after you're done. Okay. And then set it on. Yep. Otherwise, it can fall on the machine, but there's nothing to say you can, you can't build something to nest it in there when you're when you're not using it now does it does it have to be unplugged yeah okay you, so you want it because if it's well I'm, I'm so what i'm saying is uh i mean it's not hurt anything if you leave it plugs in but if you're you set it up there no i know you but if, if i made a nest up here where, where it wouldn't move around, uh, then it can stay plugged in. Is that correct? Okay. The reason why we say just unplug it is because we don't people to leave it on the table, move the machine, break it, yep. break, the, break your rollers or anything like yep, that. Yep, yep, yep. It's not a good habit to leave your touch probe on, on, on your workspace. All right. So, and this is just your dust head. It comes apart, so you can actually do a tool change in it. So we'll show you. If you want to raise the Z access point. Okay. So we're going to bring Z up. That's your Y. Damn it. Okay, we're going to bring Z up. I got to use the. If you see me doing it wrong, smack my hand. Okay. I got to use that. Okay, so this. Okay. Yep. And then this, we'll just, this goes in these little grooves. It clicks in there. Okay. And the reason why it comes off, we can just pull that off. Is that magnetic or is it just a clip? It just has clips on it. Just a clip. Okay. And that's for your. So it's just a clip. And then that's for your collet with your nut. Okay, your, so these are ER collets. Yeah, okay. these are an ER25 collet with ER an ER25 nut. Okay. And this one's actually a six to five millimeter call it. Okay, so one of the things about this here that uh, was explained to me is these are balanced co uh, collet nuts. They are rated for 35,000 RPM. So the you see these little drill holes here. 
And so they were spun up and they were measured for balance and then the company that made them, they actually took out material so it didn't get the balance on it. So these are rated for 35,000 RPM. The machine will never go up to 35K, but that's uh, why you see these little marks in there. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so this will obviously have a tool in it, but it'll just screw on to here. And then you would have, if you look at the bottom left hand side of the door, you don't see just have a wrench. So this wrench is the top a, there, it's 27 millimeter. Okay. And then you have your other one. Yep, so you got the spanner. That never goes in the first try. <laughs> Okay, so you're just showing me access here. Yeah, so pretty much you have that and then you would just snug it up. Yeah. It doesn't need to be crazy tight. Right, like it never should be. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not going to tighten it just because we don't have a tool in there right now. No. Okay. You want to walk through like your rollers. Your rollers are K1 and K2. Okay. K1 would be your back, K2 would be your front. Okay, so. So these are optional inputs, the K1 through K4. Yeah, right. That's what we have set on the machine. Okay, so for K1 and K2, if I hit K1 and K2. So, so K1 is the back roller, K2 is the front roller. And then you press them again. Mm -hmm. All right, when you press again, press again. Now, the question is, what if somebody doesn't want to use the rollers for the project they're working on? You can always take them off. There's just a single, these two nuts on both sides, and you just take them off. And okay. Side. So what activates the rollers when when you start running a program? Is that default in here? It's, it's automatically? It'll oh. default in there to raise them and to lower them at a certain um, y axis on here. As soon as it gets so far, it will drop down. I'm not going to show you. I have a test program that we can run. Okay. Is there a way to bypass the rollers and keep them on there? Let's just say I got a little flat job I'm making and I hold it down and I decide I, I don't want to take the rollers off, but. Um, you can manually put them up so, on here. Okay. So, so how do you manually lock yeah. them out so that they can't come down during a, a program you, start. You can just hit K1 and K2 once your machine is like starting up to run their program. Okay. You can always hit it and it'll keep them up. So that will never go down if I run a program right now. Okay. And they okay. might go down at the first start, but once you hit them again, they'll go back up. So when the program starts, I can actually, yep. I can turn these on and off while the program is running? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what is uh, K3, K4? Uh, at the moment, they don't do nothing. K4 doesn't do anything. K3 is like a fine tune. Okay, so it's, K3 I is... I personally don't know what they use it for. The fine tune setting, fine tune distance. Okay. Um, all right, we'll, we'll touch in on that later. So how do you turn get that off the uh, screen? You can hit cancel. Cancel, which is the yellow button. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Here's Pretty so you also have a piece of work. Yep, so I've got an overrange alarm on here. Hey. What does that mean? Oh, because it was too high up. So if you actually, like, let's say, bring your Z. I'm doing the same thing. If you bring your Z up and actually zero it, it, it limits it out because it's not because your Z won't have enough to move up if we run it down here and zero it, it goes away. Okay. So there's actually a limit. Is, is that a soft limit? Yeah. Okay. And that's just because you manually hit your Z to be that height, per se. Okay, so, so, it's, rel so it's relative to the, the zero of the workpiece. Yeah, like the top of your workpiece. So it doesn't... And it, I think it's really out to too tall from this. Like, it knows, like, hey, it's going to be too tall. Okay. Because you're probably only going to be cutting three quarters. I mean, you could put an inch of material on this, and you could run it on it and cut it, cut something through it, you probably won't be able to use your rule. Okay. All right. I'll find out more about that later. Okay. So what else do we have? Uh, so we got a ton of buttons here, so let's kind of run through these. So first we have a menu button. Mm -hmm. So, when I hit the menu button, can I hit it? Yeah. 
menu button is going to bring up. So you got machine parameters, processing parameters. Okay. Um, all these things that we preset. Okay. I preset them all. Okay. So, so these are all presets. This is nothing that we should ever be messing with. And then I'm going to cancel to get out of that. All right. Then the next button we have is on off. So this on off button. What's the on the spindle? That's the spindle. Yep. Okay. On off is the spindle. How do you set spindle speed when you're pressing on off? So when you press your spindle speed, it'll actually be, if you flip it around actually. Oh, what? Yep. Okay. So oh yeah, yeah. lots of instructions are right here on the back. Some double Just button pushes. So, so, yeah, speed multiplier and spindle ratio. So it's actually shift. Speed multiplier and spindle yep. ratio, okay. So when you turn it on, if you hit on and then you hit shift and one of these buttons, Oops. Can I hit shift and let's see. Okay, shift and which one? Uh, one of this. This will bring your speed this up. This one or this one, the little yep. zigzag buttons. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to turn the spindle on. And where is the spindle display? For right there. You're at 1200. Okay, 1200 RPM. 12. And now if I want to bring the spindle down, do I have to hold the shift button yeah. down? Okay, so if I, and it's one of these two buttons, yeah. correct? Okay, so I'm going to so hold. So your top one's going to raise it, and it's going to speed up, and okay. the bottom one's going to lower the speed. Okay, so is there a, per is there a percentage? So it's uh, yeah, there's also a percentage that is right. So it dropped it down to 10, yeah. 8, so that is, it's going to be about 10%. It's dropping at 10%. Okay. Yeah, you hit it again, the move. Okay. All right, I'm holding shift button down and hit the up. Okay, very cool. And then I can turn the spindle on and off. Okay. All right. Next button is um, all right. Tool to tool tip measure. We just did that. So offset is that. So offset is that. Well, for bit for your bits. Okay. Ex so, explain. Um. Certain. Pretty sure it's a certain bits have like a different offset. I know on our T models, they automatically when you do a tool calibration, they already have like a. They already calibrate it and put it into the offset. Um, these, I personally actually haven't used okay, it. Okay, so you're not sure. Yeah. Um, so offset. Can I press it? Yeah. Okay, so let's bring it up. Bias effect, original bias setting, X, Y. So we'll have to find out what offset does. <laughs> okay, so I'll find out about that a little yeah, bit later. I right now. To find it too. Okay. And then we have uh, repeat. So what is repeat? It'll repeat the last um, file that you have on hand. Okay. Your, I think profile one you have. Okay. And then the I.O. Uh, okay, well, let's, I didn't go across that way. File is, if I press file, what happens? It'll bring up a menu. Okay. And this is how you load your USB. I don't know if you have a file up there that you want to test. Okay. So it says copy in, copy out. Delete internal file and clear internal file. So explain each one, please. And then yeah. load file. Yeah, the one you would want to use is just your load file in. Copy in and copy out, you probably won't use because it's going to be a backup file per se. Okay, what does it do? So, so just so whoever watches this video understands and I understand, what does copy in and copy out? Um, if you you can go down and you can press it, it'll copy the file that's on your on this right now you're going to see 100 and it'll copy it either in from your usb if you have a file that it can read or copy it out from what's already in here okay so it'll copy it back out to here yeah so if you actually you can go down and hit copy out so we're going to use the up and down buttons your right y, yep okay so the green buttons will move us up and down this menu okay and then you would hit okay all right so we hit the okay button which is there and so those are all of our, they're like parameter files. Okay. So, and like if you would happen to copy these in and actually replace one of those, you would actually kind of like brick the machine. 
Okay, so so I, I'm on copy out. Yeah, so if you click it right now. And right now I have health text highlighted. Yeah. And if I click OK right now, right? It'll copy it out to your USB. It'll put it out to there. So if I press the OK, and, then and it's saying it. copy completed, click OK, and then I click, do I click? Yep, just hit OK again. OK. Yep. And then so you can copy them all, and that's kind of all of your backup files. Okay, right so so a good idea is to copy all that stuff yeah. if, if you want to do that. Okay, it's got some stuff on the bottom here, which is P down, P R E, next, and P up. What is that? Yeah, and just page up and page down. Okay. Okay, so now in order to get out of this screen, I would go to cancel, correct? Yeah, or there's actually a back button. Your X, Y right here is actually a back button. The X, Y, which equals one? Equals zero. Okay. So X, Y equals zero is a back button. Okay. All right, so then we were on file, right? And what we've got delete internal file. What those internal files that we just saw that you would copy out. Okay. Well that if, if I accidentally hit those, would that delete like parameters of the machine? Yeah. Okay, it so would pretty much break So those you machines. never ever mess with these two. If you <laughs> and if you do then uh, that, that that's why you copy out everything that you have, okay? You make the backup but the better thing is to contact Phantom you if you copy it back in. Right. Okay. All right, so, oh, we had the file. We still have file stuff. So we have load file. So this is where you actually load the the file that we want to cut, the G-code file. Yep. So in order to do that, we're going to hit OK. And then U-disk right. file. And then U-disk file. So i got a cursor down. And then hit OK. And that's going to bring everything up that's on the... USB. USB. And you can actually see your help underscore C text yeah. that you copied out. Okay, so there's the one I copied out right there. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know where that square is that we just had before. You got the oval. Um, oh, phantom test. Just taking a look here to see. I thought we had a square file on there, but I don't. It's still on there, though. It's, it should still be on the machine. Let's, so I hit With, a... Oh, did you already cut it before? Yeah, we ran it's your, um, it's your profile one. Profile one. Yeah, okay. So if you actually scroll down to that and hit OK on it. Okay. Profile one, then click OK. And right. so then now you can see that the name is right here. Okay. So you know what you're going to be cutting. Yep. Okay. And in order to run that, uh, you would actually hit your run pause down at the bottom left. Right here. Yep. Okay. So okay. we could technically, well, are we zeroed properly here? It'll actually move your Y back to your workpiece origin okay. that you said earlier. So if you hit it now, it'll actually bring up another screen. Okay. All right. So let's just say we're out of out of range like somehow the g-code is out of range um meaning let's just say it, it we, we zeroed in the wrong place and mm -hmm. the machine would want to over travel that way are there soft limits programmed in the machine okay yeah. so soft limit would prevent the machine from hitting a hard stop there are hard stops on the end of the machine just in case it has to over travel you can see it yeah, it's that little uh, gold block right there Okay, so I'm going to hit the run. We have that one. This is a, a square. And so now another screen has come up. And that gives you kind of like a final, hey, this is what you're about to run. And you have your, like, speed ratio is 100%. So it's going to be 100% of the ratio of the speed that you set on your G code. Okay. All right. So now, now, do I just uh, I hit run? You would hit uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And it'll start moving. Mm -hmm. should. It's bringing it up to speed and it'll bring it back to its original position. Your work coordinate. Okay. Uh, your speed is set to fourteen k, and then your. Um, Ratio speed is set to 7620, which is um, 100%. So if you actually, you know, you have a quick we can run it again. Right? Yeah. So 
if I run it, I don't. OK won't run it again. I have to. I have to hit the uh, run again button again, right? Yeah, or repeat. Okay, so repeat will re just just run. No, just no, no, no. It's gonna run it again. Yeah. So okay. if you actually hit these buttons here, your speed buttons, it'll actually speed it up or slow it down. Right now? Yep. So if you hit it now, I see you're at 120 percent right now. Okay. So if you hit it again, hit the bottom one. This one right. Here. Okay. okay. Yeah, so while it's running, if you actually hit this button right here, it'll slow down how fast the whole machine is moving. Okay, and our percentage is currently being shown where? Uh, it's uh, we have to run it, don't we? Repeat. Yep, and then it's right there. Your speed ratio, which is your spindle, and then speed rate is 120. Okay, so I'm gonna push the down button here, yep. and we're gonna watch. And you can turn it all the way down to zero. Okay, so my speed rate is now 70, so we're gonna go all the way down to zero. Oh, now you're really slow. So you got a lot of little, a lot of control on it. And what about the spindle ratio? So that would be your shift and those buttons. Okay. And that would change how fast your spindle is moving. Okay, so we'll hold shift. Okay, so we're still right in the middle of the program. I've just turned my ratio down. So let go of shift, and then it'll default back to the machine move. Now I keep hitting the button to bring it up. Now you're at 120% again. Okay. All right, now the rollers just relaxed. They were up while it was running. And if you run it again, you can always move them. Okay, so will, will that reverse them from there on? So why don't, let's just do this. So I'm gonna, so I would have to hit both, both of these mm -hmm. after I start to run it. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then I can hit them right now. You have to wait for that. Okay. Okay, so this is a switch then. It's like a light switch. Right now, the light switch is flipped the other way. So these didn't come back up. It might be set different. It might be set different. Opposite. What's that? It might be set opposite. Yeah, it's, it seems like they're set wrong, is, is my question right now. So when it runs, it seems to me that that should clamp down while it's running. Yeah, because I put them like, because you can see that your blue is on right now. Yeah. And that's, I set them to like, when they're off, they're down. They okay. Be wrong. okay. Well, that can be a, a problem when you're loading material. Correct. So we have to switch that. Yeah, you can always either do it there or we can switch them this way too. How do we, how do we, how do we switch it? Uh, uh, your if we switch about the air hoses. Okay. Okay. So you just manually just change the air hoses. Okay. I gotcha. And all you'd want to do is flip them. So since they're up right now, now the bottom would have air. Yep. And your top does not. Okay. And if you actually hit the button to put them down, okay. The opposite. And there's no sensors on there, right? Yeah. There's no sensors to say that for it to read that I'm down yeah. or up. Okay. On the uh, T models with the automatic rollers, there is to say, hey, I'm up. Okay. And that's because of your automatic tool change in the back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Since this does not have an automatic tool change, it does not have sensors to detect whether the cylinders are extended or retracted. But if you have an automatic tool changer on the T series, then there will have sensors on there because it has to know where those are at okay so I'm going to just switch these wires here all right so the next is the IO bit what is this button going to do and why should anybody ever mess with that I haven't gone through these okay so, so it's a little that's a little far into it so the IO bit is is uh, probably going to be where you can set your different bit rates uh, Okay, so this would be like uh, contacts, whatever. So IO bit is going to be going through the uh, through your brains, and then these don't worry, don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so okay or cancel, cancel. All right, leave IO bit out if you need problems. If you have questions about that, then if like if you want to add things to the machine, like a laser thing or something that that will look then you're going to want to put on an IO uh, 
that will be part of that IO bit and you'll have to talk to Phantom about that. Help button brings up. So what it, so we got a bunch of different helps going on here. And uh that looks like it actually some two button pushes. Some extra two button pushes that are off there on your back. Okay, so I'm gonna so I can't curse it through one. So you have to shift and so let's go shift offset would enter the get the midpoint interface. So hit shift. Yeah, shift and offset. And that's get out of that screen. Oh. So you just hit cancel. Okay. And then if I hit shift and offset. And that brings me into get the midpoint. Okay, so this is a little more advanced stuff, so we'll have to look, we can learn that one later. Um, so we've talked about all these. Let's go to machine origin. So now this is not the machine home button. No, it is the machine home button. Okay. Well, it's all right now. The machine is not in the home position, but it is set for home. If I press this now, we'll bring it home. Yep. Okay, we're gonna press. It'll also, if you press that button and then hit cancel, it'll also remove your bullseyes. So once you hit it, you have to let it come back to. Okay. Home. Will it lose if I'm if I'm set up with a zero right now? This is the same my work pieces right there. Mm -hmm. And then I hit this. Is it gonna lose that? No. no. Okay. So right now we're at zero zero twenty millimeters up. I'm gonna hit that, and we have lost the targets, mm -hmm. and the machine is moving. And what it's zeroing out is your mechanical co coordinates that are right up here. Right. Okay. Yep. So these are the machine home coordinates right here. This is your work coordinates. And what that means is this is where you are referencing your project material from. This is the machine home position. And the reason you have these two different ones is when you're working using work offsets, which is something for another day. Uh, let's see, do we have work offset listed on here? So which would be a G54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, which it does not have. I don't see it anywhere. Oh, there it is right at the top, right there. Okay, now if I went to the work piece origin, now it's going to move back to that position. It'll be a little bit faster. What's that? It'll be a little bit faster than your home. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, home has got to come in. Okay, so all it did was move the X and Y back over to that that work position that we had zeroed out. All right, so we have that. Uh, cancel, we already know that. Cancel will cancel you out of any menu that you're in. Yeah, and it'll bring you back to that screen. And it'll bring, come back to this screen here. Okay, and then... Uh, so right now, this will turn our feed rate up and down. If I hold shift, it'll turn my my spindle percentage up and down. But right now, it's irrelevant because nothing's happening. So high low does what? It changes your speed of your manual movement. Okay, so right now, if I move Y, okay, and I'm holding it, it's going really slow. And it says speed rate 12, 120% of what? That is your spindle. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, speed. Duh. Yeah, okay. Uh, but the feed percentage is not being shown here. You just have a high and a low. Okay, rate speed is 7719. Okay, so that's 719 millimeters per minute. Is that what that is? Yeah. Let's see what happens. So I can. Uh, turn that up. Can I hit that while I'm moving it? Uh, you hit just high low. While it's moving? Uh, yeah, you can. So you actually, so that's not going to change anything because it's not your actual feed rate. Okay. You would actually have to hit your high low button again, which is here. Oh, okay. And that's going to change it to your being faster. Okay. So you're at 719 right okay. now. Okay, okay. So, so in order to, so. You see how it's moving fast. Now I'm just going to hit the high low and then move it forward. So this gives you the opportunity to move it rapidly and then move it slow. Now can that that jog percentage? What we're doing right now is jogging. Can that jog percentage be changed? Yeah. Well, how do we change, change it into the menu? In, in the menu where? Where do we? Where would we change? Let's just say I want that to come in slower on my high low. 
you should see this. It's going to look real quick. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's not, it's not a uh, nature friendly. It's like okay, so, all right, so the question is, is how do I adjust those rapid, those jog rates? Mm -hmm. All right, so how would we adjust that if we wanted to? You would go to menu. Okay, menu is... Right under K1. Oh, right there, okay. You'd hit machine parameters setup. Okay, and the way to do that is by hitting OK? Yes. Okay. And then you'd go down to manual setup. Okay, manual setup is down there. So in order to go down, we're going to use the down arrow keys. Go down to manual setup. And you'd hit, and okay. hit OK. All right. And then those are your actual speeds that you would be able to change. Okay, so would I hit OK to get into that? Yep, and that is your high speed. Okay, so right now it's set at 10,000 millimeters per minute. So everything with this will always be in millimeters is what you're working with. Um, okay, so the X and the Y are both at 10,000. So let's, how would I change? Uh, you would hit edit and delete down here. Okay, edit and delete. And now you can type in a number. So is that, okay, you put in a number a number, or I can toggle, or is it, do I just put in a number? You put in a number, and that's your one through nine, which is one through nine, and oh. then negative and zero down at the bottom. Okay, so uh, let's just say, I'm just gonna type in 10,000, okay? It's because that's what it's on there, so it's 10. Um, yeah, it's right under your Y. Yeah, I gotta find out, there we go, yep. okay. Getting used to where things are on the keypad. Two, three, four, all right, so that's 10,000. You hit okay. Hit okay. And now it's saved in there. Okay, there we go. All right, and in order to get out of that, we... You can hit your back button down here. Right here, that's okay. your back button. It'll, allow, and it'll just come out of that first menu. Okay, so X, Y equals zero is a back button. Okay, cool. Or you all can right. hit cancel and that'll bring you out of all of the menus. Okay, okay, so that's so that's one of the good things. So cancel will always take you back to the screen. X, Y, if you're in a menu and you're in several layers down, then the X, Y will bring you back up through those layers. All right, so that's that's good. Okay, um, what else do we have, my friend? So we got workpiece origin, and we've got the machine origin. We got the numbers here. Okay, so can you home each axis independently? Because it's got the little little uh, radio button or the uh, radioactive marker there, there, and there. Here. I might actually get a double button push. Yeah. So if you hold your shift and then your X plus, Y plus, and Z plus, you can move to zero alone. Okay, all right, so now we have the radioactive buttons. These are indicating home position. So if I just want to home one axis, I will hold the shift button down and the Z. And Z has just rehomed itself. Okay, so that's good to know. And that was on the back here. How did I know that was on the back? You, you indicated that. Um, which one was it? This one right here. X, Y, Z, move to zero alone. Okay. Right there. Okay. All right, so one of the things that is, we'll, we'll, we'll run through this, but most of your description is on the back here. It just have to, you have to understand how, what that means, each one. You have to kind of sometimes think about it. That wasn't totally clear to me. So, okay. So you don't have to remember how to do all the two button pushes and all yeah. that. It makes it a little simpler. Okay. What is the edit, uh, delete button? What, what are all the functions that that is doing? That's allowing us to get into, can you get into the the g-code file not on the, this not on this okay or you mean to change your g54 to a g55 yeah well yeah so how would you that's a good question how would i change the g54 to a g54 More like you'd probably be on the back of it as well uh that yeah. is probably right so so it's going to be our, our work offset okay yeah, so select right there so shift and workpiece. Where were you at? Right down here. So it's right down, right there. Select 
I can't read that, but see it. Oh, there it is, right there. Shift D50 plus work off. piece. Okay. All right. So, uh, one of the common terms is work offset. It's so in this case, it's work piece. So, shift WCS G fifty four fifty five. So, shift plus work piece. Okay, shift plus. In your work piece, always do. What's that? Where is it? Right here. I believe it. Oh, okay. Right okay. So I'm going to click that, and now we're on G55. I'm holding the shift button down, hitting the workpiece, G56. Okay, cool. All right, good. And we're back to G54. We'll run through all the things on the back, too. All right, what else do we have? So I talked about edit and delete. So this is, this is where you want to kind of be careful, because you can... Uh, yeah, you can go into your menu. If you happen to go into your menu and change some things, okay. if you know what you're doing, it's fine. You can always change the speeds, make it faster, make it slower. But you don't ever want to just like start changing a bunch of things in there. Right. Until you know what you're doing, don't touch this button. All right, the shift, we know what that means. So shift is just using alternate uh, commands. We already know that these will zero out our uh, different axes. So if I want to change the X to X zero. X already zero. I did that. Okay, Y zero. Okay, good. And then we have the minus and what else we have on top there? Will we ever be using can that be used? If you wanted to change your I use it for changing the limit of the Z axis. And I put it at it's at a negative 150 millimeters. So it, if you have a tool in it, it will strike the table. But if it's just like it is now with no tool, no tool holder, it'll go all the way down to the close to the table. Okay. Okay. So so you can set some safeties with with using these numbers. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, then the last ones are advanced functions and simulations. So, okay, here's one. So when you have the run button, right, mm -hmm. right now I could hit run, mm -hmm. and it's ready to run the program. This screen comes up, says processing parameter setting, and that would be the one we just had in there, that yep. square. And if I hit that, it's going to bring the spindle up. And it's going to start running. So if I hit pause, and you can see that it says paused up there as well. Yep. So I hit the yellow. pause button, everything is just stopped, and where's the same pause at? Okay, yeah. yellow right there. Okay, and then I can hit this and it'll start to run again. Mm -hmm. And bring you up by your screen again. Oh, I just have to hit run again? Yeah, just hit okay. Okay, yeah. And then I'll just start back from where it was. Yeah, I was thinking this was wrong, okay. that you actually zeroed it out further on the table, yep. so it's cutting further on the table. Now it's in a different position. All right, cool. Anything else? Uh, what's the advanced function? If you hit, it'll bring up another menu. Okay. So advanced function brings up uh, one breakpoint processing. So this is uh, back-end stuff that you should never be messing with, especially if you're brand new. So to get out of that, we're going to hit cancel, and there we are. Okay, let's run, let's run through the back. We have machine origin, so it's, it's telling us what that button is, is X, Y, Z, go all back to zero. So machine origin is right there, and everything will move back home. All right, workpiece. That will move the machine back to that G54 location. And we have edit delete is uh, modify parameters. Click edit delete, um, which you don't ever want to mess with. I won't mess with it right now. Advanced function will stay off of that as well. Manual, so continuous and step mode switching. So explain that. And that's switching between continuous and your jog. Okay. That you can change your speeds to that as well. And that is. Did I miss the manual button? Yeah, right here. I did miss the manual yeah. button. So if you click that one, it actually changes up here. You can see it goes from jog to continuous. Where's jog? Right here. Okay. And if you press it again, it'll go distance, and then it's one. 
and you can change all of those settings which right now they don't really change much between each one of the other ones but so what what does that mean what so so it, it's saying continuous to jog so it's toggling the two which one is active right now jog okay so whichever one is highlighted blue is the one that's active okay and if i press manual again so so what does that okay so it's jog it's toggling through continuous jog and distance 1.0 okay so what does that mean what is this telling me right now and that's your, your different types of movements so okay distance is 1.0 that's one to me it's one millimeter yeah. okay so and press y just press y once okay so just click it yeah it should move mm -hmm. one okay okay now if okay so if i hold y down it won't okay so there we go so if you're holding y down or something like that and you're trying to jog it around it's not going anywhere it's because you're currently set in jog uh distance mode, distance mode. So don't okay so these mode yep so these three are synonymous with each other you're either working continuous you're working jog or you're working distance Am I understanding that right? There's three different modes here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your distance won't allow you to move more than one. Right. So I can't hold it. So all I can do is just jog by clicking the button. And every time it moves, I have to click it again. All right. So we're going to go to manual again. And now continuous is active. That means I can hold it down. And it's going at low right now. So I can switch high low. Mm -hmm. Is that because the uh, thing is down? I think so. Uh, raise your hand. Okay. Try to jog it again. Okay. Okay, that's what it was. All right, let's bring, let's bring that back. And I'm just going to, because I'm going to edit that little bit out. Okay. All right. And then what is the jog? We're going to go over to manual. Jog is your normal normal movement is what we pretty much use on all the other machines and it's kind of a well what's the difference because i mean it looks like it's doing the same thing uh you could set different speeds in it if we go back to that um that setting into your menu which into setting your menu okay so we go into menu yeah. where's menu Top again? Left. okay then machine parameters okay hit okay and then your manual setup uh, manual setup is right there. Click OK. And then okay. manual Continu high speed. Or yeah, what? continuous jog switch type. Oh, okay. Continuous jog. All right, click OK. Mm -hmm. By press time length by manual key. What does that mean? Continuous jog switch type. So explain these two. Those are actually not the I don't ever change those. What? Okay. But by press time length and by it. manual key. We can change it and find out. Okay, let's find out. Uh, it won't switch. Okay, you just hit edit and delete, which switch that. And okay, okay. Edit, edit, delete, okay. Oh, by the way, so when the machine is moving, the, the roller was down, it was in front of that lip there, and that acted as a lock so the machine could not move backwards. Now, one of the things with that is that the zero position that we had preset got lost because it's a step for motors and it doesn't have the feedback loop to, to tell the machine that it did not move. It doesn't have servo or feedback or an encoder. So if that happens to you, you're going to have to reset your zero, uh, your X, Y, zero. Okay, so here we are. So now what we're going to hit? Okay. Okay, click OK. Then you can hit cancel. Okay. I'm going to bring you back to the main menu. Okay. And then switch. You can hit manual to go into continuous. Okay, manual to get over to continuous. There we go. Now you can press it. Okay, so just move. Let's go to jog. Okay. Now, oh, I'm, 
Which one was that? Yeah, so it actually switched it. Okay, let's, it switch. let's go to distance. Okay. But switch so, your jog to be like your distance. Yeah, okay. So it kind of made distance and jog the same thing. Okay, so we'll get out of that. We're going to go back to manual. And then we're going to go down to... Yeah, machine parameters set up. Oh. Right here. Click OK. And then go down to manual setup. We'll come back into this menu because I want to... Uh, and then... Continuous jog switch type. Okay. And then hit and edit. Edit. And delete. And it'll switch it from one to the other. Okay. And you can hit OK. Click OK, and then cancel. We'll bring back the main menu. And now, uh, we should be on. You're on distance. I'm on distance, so it's just one millimeter at a time. And then, um, let's see, hit that button again. Okay, continuous. Continues. Jog. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right, uh, what else do we have? So the simulation, what does simulation do? It'll bring up another menu. It won't be something that you end up using. Um, maximum. So it's actually telling you, it's telling you where you're gonna end up, where it's gonna cut, which is all fine right now. Okay, so the name, that's one profile, arcs. Okay, so this is the name of the file, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that square file that we got loaded in right now. All right, so this is telling me my maximum cut distances. My minimum cut distance. So, okay, it's based on the origin. So the origin is set in a, in a corner. Yeah, it's set on you. Actually, it's going off of your workpiece coordinates. Oh, okay. Yep. So, so right now my workpiece coordinate G fifty four zero zero, and then it goes down five millimeters minus Z, which that's what that's telling me, and then my max X travel will be four four twenty point two three. My max Z travel, I'm sorry, my max Y travel four eight seven point oh one, and max Z will be seventeen point. So that's his max Z height. Okay. All right, so we're going to cancel that. And let's go back to that menu now. So there are other things that were in there. So we're going to go to menu and machine parameters. So if I go into machine parameters, we have several things here. Pulse equivalent. So these are getting machine size, soft limit status, uh, home setup, spindle setup. So these are things that you don't normally want to mess with until you absolutely understand your machine. And you and never want to mess with pulse equivalent. Yeah, pulse is the is the count that is put pushing to the motors. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the ratio that it is. It's I think it's 76 points. Something. Okay, so that number there, that one, that one there, stay out of there. But um, if you ever want to get in here and need something you need to change, just contact Phantom. That's what they're there for. Okay, so um... Machine size, soft limit status, home setup, spindle setup, motor direction, speed limit. So the speed limit is that um, is that a max rapid rate? Okay. Now, so if I come into speed limit, we're just going to take a look. This this is something that sometimes. I do like to change on my machine, so I come down there and I hit OK. And right now my max speed limit is 12,000 millimeters per minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can come in, I can change these numbers. If I wanted to go to 15, then I can change these numbers to 15,000. Okay. Now, and, and what that, your and my rapid will be faster. But correct at 120 percent, or how fast you would set it in there on your program, it would be. 120% would end up being your maximum at 15. And you can always change it down and up. So say that again. Because um, you would actually believe in VCARV, you can actually set it in there. Yeah. 
and you can check